Good afternoon. So, I've built a new aircraft, and it's the one you see here. It's a Ranger 2000 by Volantrex. Now, this is the biggest aircraft I've ever built. It's a two meter wingspan, and it's so big, I can't even fit it all in the camera shot at once. Um, I think the previous biggest aircraft built before this was either the AXN or the Bixler, and I think that that was a 1.3 meter wingspan. So yeah, this is quite a bit bigger than anything I've built before. I've actually been wanting a Volantrix aircraft for quite a few years now. Um, but every time I've looked, like I've never been able to find one in stock. And to be honest, I actually thought maybe Volantrix had gone out of business. But then a couple of weeks ago, my local online hobby shop got a whole load of Volantrix aircraft in stock. So here we are. Now, the one I would have really liked to get would have been the Volantrex Ranger EX, which has a slightly bigger fuselage and also has landing gear. But my hobby shop didn't get that one in stock, so I opted for this one instead, and I, I'm happy with my purchase. I think this would be a good aircraft. So I bought this as a PMP, so it came with the motor, ESC, and servos pre-installed. That's also including servos for the flaps, which was quite nice. Uh, the wings and the tail are made of EPO, and the wings are detachable, which is pretty much vital for an aircraft this big. And then the fuselage is actually made of plastic, which is different. I've never owned an aircraft with a plastic fuselage, but from all the reviews I've seen online about this aircraft, uh, actually the plastic is really durable. And you know, chances are if you crash this aircraft, you're going to break a wing before you break the fuselage. So. Yeah, that's uh, pretty good. So in this video, I'm going to give you just a quick little overview of the build that I've done. Um, this is going to be a two part video um, because what I'm going to show you today is the basic setup that I've done. That's where I've put a flight controller, FPV gear, GPS, etc. on board. But then in the second video, I'm going to be adding some additional electronics such as a pan tilt system, possibly a tail or a wing camera, and might also have some LEDs as well. I don't know, we'll find out in the future. But yeah, in this video, I'm just gonna give you an overview of the basic build I've done, and then show you some footage from the first flight. So let's get on with it. So starting in the front here, just under the nose, this is the FPV camera. The one I've chosen to use is the OneCam Phoenix 2, which to be honest is the camera I use in all my builds, just because it's a really good camera. Now, when you buy this aircraft, there is the opening in the front there for a camera, but there isn't actually any way to mount the camera. So the first thing I did was I went and designed and then 3D printed a little mount. The camera is installed into the mount, and then the mount is secured to the inside of the fuselage with some double-sided tape. Now, I don't love that solution. I think I'd much prefer if the mount was somehow screwed into the fuselage, maybe by putting a couple of screws here. But for the time being, this is what I've gone with, and um, yeah, I might change that in the future, or I might leave it, I don't know. Now, moving down to the side of the aircraft. So this is the antenna for the receiver. The receiver is a TBS Crossfire Nano, which is what I use in all my builds. The antenna is secured to the side of the fuselage here with this little 3D printed mount. Um, this is printed in TPU. And the reason I've used that is so that if this ever takes a knock, the TPU will flex rather than break, um, which obviously is preferable. Now to route the antenna wire into the fuselage, I did drill a little bit of a hole just in here. And the way the mount is designed, um, it is a friction fit, so it does hold the mount very securely. But I have also used just a little bit of glue just run on there, just to make sure that the antenna does always stay in the upright configuration and doesn't you know, flip backwards in the, the wind as it's flying. Now if we remove the canopy, so we can see inside, that is where the actual receiver is mounted. It's just secured onto this plywood plate here using some double-sided tape. Now also on this plywood plate is the flight controller. And what I've chosen to use for this build is the Matek F765WSE. Now I've got this flight controller installed in a little 3D printed mount. If you've seen my Hewing T1 build video, the mount in this is very similar to the mount I used in that. I basically took the design of the previous mount and then just slightly tweaked it for this aircraft. 
So not only does that mount hold the flight controller, but it's also holding the GPS. I don't know whether you'll be able to see it or not. If I aim the camera down, might just about be able to make out the little GPS unit just up there. I like having a mount that kind of holds the electronics all together if I can. Um, and there's also uh, another little 3D printing mount just down here underneath the plywood plate that's held in place with these big thick cable ties. That mount is uh, there specifically to hold the USB and buzzer board that's connected to the flight controller. Um, I really don't like it that they have those boards separate from the flight controller. I'd much prefer it if the USB port was in the flight controller like they used to. But yeah, these days they do the little USB board separate, so that's where I've installed that. This mount does also, well it should also serve a second purpose for strain relief. You see here the ESC wires have been tucked underneath it. I was also supposed to tuck the XC60 wires underneath it and they'll wrap around, obviously to provide a little bit of strain relief. But because I'm a bit of a monkey, I completely forgot to do that. So <laughs> at some point I'll fix that so that those wires are rooted underneath just for that little bit of strain relief. Now, moving down to the other end of the aircraft, that is where the video transmitter is installed. Now, when you buy this aircraft, there is actually this little uh, platform here built into the fuselage, and I'm pretty sure it is designed for holding a video transmitter. But I've also designed just a very small, basic little 3D printed mount, which is printed in PLA. And the main reason for having that is to hold the antenna up. Now, the video transmitter I'm using here is a T-Motor uh tx200 or fx200 um can't remember and that has a mmcx connector and obviously so does this antenna now if you ever use an mmcx connector you know that although they're a very secure connection the antenna is able to roll left and right it's not held upright so this little mount here literally is designed just to hold this antenna so that it can't roll to the left or the right um, the antenna is a TrueRC Singularity, I think. Um, I'll list all the parts somewhere in the video or in the description. Uh, very good antenna, I've used this on a couple of my builds. And uh, like I said, it's very good. And the video transmitter is a 500 milliwatt. Now, just to point out, this uh, little red and black wire here that doesn't go anywhere, this video transmitter um, has a little back that's kicking out 5 volts onto these wires. Now at some point in the near future, I'm going to be, like I said earlier, adding a tail camera down here or something. So this 5 volt supply here will be ideal for powering that. Now to route the wires from here down to the flight controller here, the first thing I had to do was drill a little hole just in there. Now, I actually expected it to be really tricky to get the wires to not only go down here, but then come up here and go that way. But actually it wasn't too hard. Um, first thing I did is I fed the wires in there and then I lifted the aircraft right up so that gravity kind of pulled them down. And then I took the motor mount off. Uh, I think there's uh, one, two screws there and then there's three on the other side and then this mount came off, um, which then allowed me to reach in and grab the wires and pull them up and then feed them into there so yeah I thought that was gonna be a really really tricky job but actually that wasn't too bad um, and yeah allow me to get this wired up now whilst we're down at this end of the aircraft just want to just quickly show you the tail section um, I've actually laminated this I've laminated both the horizontal and the vertical stabilizers and also the surfaces but I haven't actually laminated the wings yet and the reason for that is because Later on, when I get around to adding possibly a wingtip camera down here, obviously I'm gonna to have to provide some wiring down into the fuselage for power. So I've decided that I'm not gonna laminate the wings yet because I wanna put the wiring in first. And obviously also I, might, I might also put some LEDs in the wings as well. So I'll do that first and then I'll do the laminate over the top just because I think that'll look a lot nicer. Now also on the note of the wings, I'm not going to take them off now, but I'll put a picture up here somewhere. When you uh, take the wings on and off, there's quite a large sort of bundle of wires in there that's a bit annoying. 
Um, what I'm planning to do is not only am I going to shorten those wires, but I'm also going to change the connectors. So at the moment each wing has got two wires, one for each servo. But I want to change it so there's just one single connector in each wing that will handle the power and signals for both. Obviously that connector is also going to have to take into account any additional wiring as well. I'm not sure what type of connector I'm going to use yet. I'm going to have to do a bit of research into what types are out there. But that's something I want to do um, before the next video. Just have a nicer connector in there that just makes taking the wings on and off a lot easier. Now talking about the next video, so I said that I'm going to be adding a pan tilt system possibly to the front here. So when you buy this aircraft new, you don't just get this canopy here, but you also get this one here, which is made out of EPO. Now I want to actually design my own little canopy that'll go on here, um, design and then 3D print it. Um, just because, well one, it will look a little bit cleaner and nicer and two I've seen a couple of videos where people have reported that the foam one sometimes likes to fly off of this in flight which isn't ideal so hopefully the one I designed will secure onto here just a little bit better now I'm not sure if I'm going to do a pan and tilt or whether I'll just do pan but either way I'm planning to have a HD camera up here either like a split style camera or maybe a one cam thumb alongside a normal FV camera I don't really know. By the way, I want to have a HD camera up here on the nose um, just because that'll be really cool. So yeah, that's a bit of an overview of the build that I've done at the moment. Now I have been out and I've done a very, very quick test flight on this just to check that it, it does all work. Um, and it does, it flew very nicely. Uh, on the launch, um, it did dip down a little bit as I threw it, although I've seen the same thing in other people's videos. Um, as far as I know, I had the CG right. I mean, this does actually have little CG markers on the wings, which is what I use as a reference point. But other than that little dip on the launch, it went up into the air, absolutely no problem. Um, it glides really, really well. Um, the only problem I had on the maiden flight was that return to home wasn't working. Um, which is why I actually cut the flight short and that was simply because I made a very small mistake in the programming But yeah, other than that it flew really really well and um, it's my first time using an aircraft with flaps and That certainly does make an aircraft really floaty, right? <laughs> it was actually a bit of fun trying to get this to land because it just kept on gliding for absolutely ages so yeah, I've flown it, it's all good. So now I'll be concentrating on finishing the build by adding the other electronics and 3D printed parts. So keep an eye out for a part two to this video in a couple of weeks time. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.